Welcome to Mikunst Hardware. I have already tested quite a few Huanangi motherboards and now I have finally got myself two Huanangi graphics cards. One of them is GTX 1660 Super and another one is RTX 2060. Both of the graphics cards are having exactly the same packaging. You can see that the boxes are identical. The only difference is uh, this little sticker. One is saying RTX 2060, another one is saying GTX 1660 Super. Actually, it's not saying GTX and not saying RTX, just 2060 and 1660 Super. Okay, so let's take a look at one of them and start with the RTX 2060 and we will see what we have inside. In the box we have just this some plastic foam, then it's a bubble wrap or rather bubble bag. And inside here we have the graphics card itself. Let me put the box away so it does not bother me. Now let's take a look at the graphics card. What, well, first what I can say is that it's feeling really nice. This shroud is not plastic, it's made from some kind of a metal, maybe it's aluminum, maybe it's something else. The fans are also actually feeling really nice. And what's more impressive is that we have metal backplate. This backplate is not a plastic crap like some of the cheap graphics cards have. For some reason manufacturers decided to add these plastic backplates to make the graphics card look cool, but it doesn't help with the GPU cooling at all. Unfortunately, I don't think there are any thermal paths between the backplate and the graphics card itself. And I don't think I will be disassembling it to check it. But the backplate feels really nice and it's a metal one as well. The graphics card is also quite heavy. I will validate its uh, real weight and probably add some titles in the video after I do that. We have 8-pin power connector, which is standard for RTX 2060. And from the video outputs, we unfortunately have just three outputs, DisplayPort, HDMI and DVI. It will be enough for basically any gamer. But for my usage it's not gonna be enough because I have three monitors which are e e using either DisplayPort or HDMI and Oculus Rift as VR glasses. Well, enough about RTX 2060, let's open GTX 1660 and see if it's as good as RTX 2060 or if it's not as good. Having exactly the same box, exactly the same packaging, I'll keep this one. Let's take the graphics card out of this box. Here it comes, put in the box away. And we see that uh, 1660 Super looks slightly different. It's a bit smaller and it's also lighter. What's more disappointing is that this is plastic and it feels cheaper than RTX 2060. The fans are also feel cheaper and uh, I can feel that they are squeaky a little bit over here, which might be making some extra noise, but we will see about that. The heatsink is also a bit smaller, that's why the graphics card is lighter compared to RTX 2060. On the back side we unfortunately do not have backplate, but I really don't think that 1660 Super needs a backplate because uh, it's not a hot GPU and it's also a budget GPU. For the video outputs we have exactly the same configuration as RTX 2060, it's DisplayPort, HDMI and DVI output. Again, it will be more than enough for any casual gamer who wants to connect up to three monitors or just one monitor, but for me it's not enough. For the power input we also have 8-pin power connector, which seems to be standard for GTX 1660 Super. What it looks like that both of these graphics cards are using identical PCBs. So Huanangri is trying to cut cost by uh, using the same PCB in multiple models, which is totally fine. But let's take a look at the heatsink. We can see that RTX 2060 is physically larger, so the cooling performance shall be better. But the PCB seems to be very, very similar. I'm not sure if I can spot any difference without disassembling the cards, which I, I am not going to do, at least not in this video. And we can take a look at the back side, but the back side is covered with the backplate on RTX 2060. I guess that's all I can say about these two graphics cards without going into the detailed testing. 
The 1660 Super, it feels okay, but it doesn't feel like anything special, it's just like 1660 Super. I have uh, touched better and worse models from different manufacturers such as uh, Asus, Gigabyte and others. Like, it does not feel crap, but it also does not feel spectacular. The RTX 2060 on the other hand, I'm kinda surprised by it. Following the specification of the graphics card, we can see that both GTX 1660 Super and RTX 2060 do not have any factory overclocking. Both of them are supplied with the default NVIDIA settings. Huanan G GTX 1660 Super has 1530 MHz core frequency and 1785 MHz turbo frequency. RTX 2060 has 1365 MHz core frequency and 1680 MHz turbo frequency. This is identical to the NVIDIA Founders Edition or reference design. Memory frequency is also identical, 1750 MHz for both of the graphics cards. In games though, Huanan G GTX 1660 Super goes up to 1830 MHz. RTX 2060 goes to 1850 MHz. Unfortunately, both of the graphics cards have locked power consumption limitation, it's not possible to increase it in MSI Afterburner or other applications, thus we have limited overclocking capabilities. Nevertheless, it's possible to apply 100 to 200 overclock for both of the graphics cards. With this little overclock, I was able to achieve 1980 MHz with the GTX 1660 Super and 2 GHz with RTX 2060. Of course, these values are constantly going a bit up and down, depends on the graphics card load and some other aspects, but on average it was like this. It's also possible to slightly overclock the video memory, but in both cases I was not able to achieve stable overclocking for 100 MHz. 1660 Super was stable with 50 MHz overclock on memory, and RTX 2060 was stable at around 70-80 MHz overclock for the video memory. Now let's talk about each of the graphics cards separately. Huanan G GTX 1660 Super can be found for around 215 euros as of right now. For me, it's slightly cheaper than the other local offers, and the quality of the graphics card is slightly better than the other budget alternatives I can buy in my local shops. From the pros, I can say its price, its look, and its operating volume. While gaming or under stress test, the graphics card never went above 75 degrees Celsius. Usually it was staying between 70 and 72 degrees Celsius. This is a very good result. It also doesn't matter if I apply a slight overclock or if I don't apply the overclock. With a little overclock the fans are spinning slightly faster, without overclock they are spinning slightly slower. Regarding the fans, unfortunately I do not have any equipment to measure the noise, but overall I would say the graphics card is very quiet. Still, even though it's quiet with these plastic fans on GTX 1660 Super, sometimes I can hear annoying tick 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 sound. It's not loud, it's not noisy, but if you put your ear close to the graphics card you can hear it. Such sound may indicate that the fans are not of the highest quality. But once you put the graphics card into a computer case, it's impossible to hear this sound. For the cons, I can mention that the graphics card has limited overclocking abilities due to locked power consumption limitations. It's possible to try to increase the GPU voltage to achieve higher frequencies, but unfortunately with the restricted power consumption, the graphics card is downclocking itself due to the increased power consumption. Thus, it makes no sense to increase the voltage to achieve high frequencies, and the only viable overclock is to increase the clock frequency by 100 to 200 MHz. Huanan G GTX 1660 Super also does not stop its fans when idling. It's not a deal breaker, but it would be nice if the graphics card could stop its fans when the temperatures are staying like 50-60 degrees Celsius and the GPU load is not that high. As a budget option, this graphics card has only three video outputs – DVI, HDMI and DisplayPort. For most of the consumers, this will be more than enough. In my case, it's not enough though. Overall, my score for Huanan G GTX 1660 Super would be 7 out of 10. But if you plan to buy it, please do the calculations and make sure that it's profitable for you. Maybe in your local region you will have slightly better offers, or maybe your local offers will be just a tiny bit more expensive than Honan GTX 1660 Super. Also make sure that you will not have any problems with the taxations when such graphics cards are coming to your country and you're receiving the package. If you have done all the calculations and you have decided to purchase yourself a Huanan G GTX 1660 Super, then I can recommend you Huanan G official store from AliExpress. I am not advertising for this store and all my Huanan G products which I am testing I have purchased with my own money, 
but if you would like to help me receive products straight from the store in the future, you can drop the seller a message saying that you have got to the store through me. If there will be enough traction, maybe Honanji official store in the future will provide me some samples for testing for free. In that case I will be able to review much more Huananji products and you will receive much more interesting content and information. For the curious ones I am also linking two user benchmark rounds using Huananji GTX 1660 Super Graphics Card. First one is without overclocking, means with the stock settings of the graphics card, and the second one with a slight overclock applied. Now let's talk about Huananji RTX 2060. Well, these two graphics cards are very similar, but unlike GTX 1660 Super, RTX 2060 feels much better. The cooling quality is also significantly better, and the fans are really silent. I didn't hear the annoying tick 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 sound, and when I was testing the graphics card using my Huananji X99TF motherboard, the small VRM fans were more noisy than RTX 2060 from Huananji. I think it's a very decent result for the graphics card. The temperatures were also staying around 70-72 degrees Celsius and never went above 75 degrees Celsius. Personally, I also like how it looks and I think it looks better than the GTX 1660 Super. Unfortunately though, RTX 2060 also does not stop its fans while idling and it also has just three video outputs – DVI, HDMI and DisplayPort. Again, this is more than enough for the average consumer, but not enough for me. One weird thing I can mention about RTX 2060 from Huananji is the GPU-Z readings. For some reason the release date is specified August 20, 2018. NVIDIA RTX 2060 was released on July 9th of 2019. This is not possible to have a BIOS which is older than the graphics card itself, or maybe that's possible, or maybe it's just a false reading, or maybe Huananji just misclicked the date while providing the BIOS for the graphics card. All in all, Huananji RTX 2060 scores 8 out of 10 in my scoring system. As usual, please do your own research and your own calculations to see if it's reasonable to buy this graphics card for your local region and for your local needs. But if you decide to buy these, I would really appreciate if you can drop a message to the seller saying that you have got to the shop and making this purchase after watching my video or after getting a reference from me. For Huananji RTX 2060 I also provide two user benchmark runs, one without any overclocking and another one with a slight overclock. All in all I have got a really good impression about both of the graphics cards, of course Huananji RTX 2060 is slightly better than Huananji GTX 1660 Super, but it's also costing a bit more. Still I cannot say, ok these are good graphics cards, go and buy them. It's just two graphics cards I have tested and I cannot say that entire batch and entire product line is really good. This is my experience, two graphics cards that I have received are really decent ones, but I cannot guarantee that all of them will be this good. Nevertheless, I hope you have enjoyed my video, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, goodbye.